It's really an honor to be here for the fifth of a series on digitizing Europe. We are traveling, that's a journey towards the gigabit society, and that means speed, but it also means latency. We need very large data range, coverage is important, costs have to be low, energy efficiency we should not forget, resilience is super important, and security. We will have more than a trillion connections, um, and which is similar to the human brain, with intelligence as much as distributed. And we have a responsibility um, to, to be able to engage it, to drive it, but also to react to it. All these computers and robots are now communicating using wireless infrastructure as that Vodafone is providing. We have to discover and exploit potentials for flexibility in every sector of industry and society. And that means uh, we have to really look into all these different sectors of industry. And we can only do that by information and communication technology. You have to play with new technologies at a very early stage. I'm an optimist because I believe that uh, we have been the most remarkably adaptable life form and we will carry on adapting. And as we adapt, we innovate and we adapt to the innovations that we have done. But what we do know is that the potential scope of automation has rapidly expanded. And according to our estimates, roughly 47% of US jobs are susceptible to computerization as a result of that. I've never met anyone in business who says, oh yeah, no, I'm sorted, <laughs> we're set, change, no. That stuff that's coming, not interested. Mm. No one thinks like that. And I think, you know, the more people you meet and the more ideas you change, everyone is looking um, for the edge. And you know, the, the technology in the future that we've all, that the guys up here have explained is, is coming. And I think that we absolutely need to make sure in every country around the world that we're working with governments to, to get the underlying capability in place. What we're talking about as engineers is always creating something that doesn't exist today yet. That's very different compared to a natural scientist. A natural scientist is Faust, yeah, Faustish, trying to understand the existing. We engineers are not interested in existing. We're inter interested in generating something that doesn't exist yet. Coding probably needs to be the first, second language. You know, forget about English, you know, think coding. And people in kindergarten, people in elementary school need to understand the principles, the basic principles of logics and coding. Not everybody of those kids will become a programmer and, a, and an engineer, but they need to understand the principles that, that, that are fundamental to this. We run the right way and we should combine these different paths. We need this focus on innovation and innovation without infrastructure. It's not, uh, it's not possible. This is the moment where science and fiction can come together. So let us work towards this future. If I could summarize it maybe in five words, faster, cheaper, smarter, more flexible and more fun. It will change and it will shape the future. And we want to be an active, all of us, I believe, want to be an active part in shaping that future.